Um, yeah, I would have to rejoin, but I could show a single picture. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll give him a minute and I'll turn up my volume. So um, the other thing that I wanted to do and um, is to get people to sign up and I will create a little form for that for the um, for the August 17th live demoing of each of the different um, platforms OKD4 running on that and set it up. Um, so I'll send an invitation and a, a note to the mailing list to get people to sign up and volunteer for demo, demo sessions. Does anyone have um, an idea about how long each of those sessions should be? Should they be a half an hour or a one hour? Does it take a full hour to deploy OKD, say, on GKE or and talk about it? I think one hour would be sufficient. For one hour is generally the case. I mean, it takes 12 and a half minutes just to deploy it. Um, a, a three, not 12 and a half, 12 and a half for one node, a single node, but about 32 minutes for, for the three node reduce setup. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll actually test a, a bare metal mirrored install. Um, I'll time it, what I've been doing in my lab, because it's not, it's not too terribly long because it's pulling from a local um, registry. That does speed it up some when it's not having to drag the images across the internet. Yeah. So, um, and then, like, if I make them in one hour slots and we just schedule them the whole day and, and live stream or however long and however many we have, then in the extra segment, um, we can have Q and A on whatever the like, whether it's Azure or GKE or AWS or Bare Metal or um, whatever. So um, that that's my goal, and um, I'm sticking to it for now. Um, and then I'll, I'll create a landing page for that, um, sort of a la the OpenShift Commons gatherings, and we can. Um, and I'll, but I'll do it off of OKD.io as opposed to off of Commons Gap, the Commons site, and um, people can come as they wish. So each hour would have to have like the first five minutes might have to be what is OKD by each of the the persons, just a little you know a couple of minutes about what it is, um, and then go into the demo, and we'll, then we'll have the end of the day. And this is what Diane being sneaky, we'll have you know, six or seven videos of each of these topics to add for people to use from the website. So um, I am, my my motto is renew, reuse, recycle content everywhere. And um, that's really what I'm going for. So Vadim, you should be back in now. Vadim and I see Christian is here. So um, how about if we kick off today's meeting with an update on where we are, um, any feedback on the GA and any engineering stuff that we need to be aware of. Um, sure. I guess I'll go first. So let me share my screen so that we would see some stats. There it is. Um, you might know that if you're using Red Hat's full secret OCP and OKD as well, are reporting data using telemetry back to our servers. And we are using it to build a very useful stat. So here is the stats for the OKD for the last week. Um, the orange graph here is the GA release, so we can see it's steadily growing. And um, others, for instance, yellow is beta 5, about 40 active clusters right now. And uh, the blue and green are beta 6 and beta 4, respectively. And some of something like 5 um, RC clusters active. Um, based on that, we can say that upgrades are not very um, popular, which is a bit surprising. But I guess that's what we should improve on. And we've got a lot of new installs which are persisting, meaning the number doesn't drop, so people just don't destroy their clusters, which is um, pretty good, I guess. 
Um, we have no clue how to estimate if a fake pool secret has been used, but I'm assuming the numbers are similar. Um, on the issue side, I don't think we have um, any new interesting bugs. I think the only one is that you have to create um, workers twice. Uh, you have to run the create manifest step twice because of the OKD specific changes we introduced. We can fix that issue a bit later. And that's pretty much it, I guess, from my side. Um, Christian, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't think so. Uh, honestly, I've been head down in the code for the past couple of days, um, ever since we got GA out. And um, yeah, not much more to say from my side. Um, I'm, I'm definitely interested in feedback uh, from, from folks that have installed it. Um, and yeah, maybe one thing uh, we're I'm we're in the middle of migrating the OCP installer to Ignition Spec three, so uh, very soon we'll have uh, Red Hat CoreOS with uh, Ignition V two that supports Spec three, and uh, then the installer uh, will be the OCP and OKD installer will will already be much more aligned than they are right now. The MCO we have uh, successfully merged together so uh, from 4.6 on there will be just one branch uh, Vadim and I are uh, currently working on figuring out how to test both OCP and OKD from the same branch there um, but yeah we, we'll figure that out and right now obviously we're at OKD 4.5 GA <coughs> and just wanted to say I'm very happy about that uh, yeah thanks everybody who thanks Vadim thanks Diane uh, from my side, um, great work, and especially Diane uh, for for keeping us uh, on edge with this, and Vadim, um, yeah, for for just doing lots and lots of work there. Yeah. I, I think every, it was, on the, go for it. Quick question on the telemetry: um, Does it skew the results of your telemetry if we create and destroy multiple? clusters you know over a period of time or is the telemetry counting um, actual active live clusters this graph counts active live clusters um, okay. CI is doing the very same thing like creating crazy amount of clusters meanwhile so we can see some jitter um, I think we would come up with a better graph showing if a cluster has lived at least a day, we'll keep it in the stats. But that's something we that's something we should invest in on OCP side as well. Okay. Well, I, I flashed it up on the screen for a minute, but I just was going to share as well the um, and I'll try sharing again now. I apologize. I didn't mean to show everybody that right off the bat. Um, the survey that I went, um, I sent out about, you know, adoption really was um, meant to just sort of get us a baseline right now, and so I can redo it in six months or three months or whatever in a cadence, so we can sort of watch this going up. And I'll share um, the the results with it here. I haven't done any really deep things, but um, some of it's pretty obvious. Um, and I, I think a lot of uh, thank you. A lot of the responses came from people in the working group. So, um, which is natural, but there are a few outside um, folks as well, and that's it's pretty, pretty. Um, you know, a lot of it is we're just it's very early um, to stuff. And what I was really interested in is um, what people were looking for um, in terms of, um, you know, what we can do as a working group to help them, um, and maybe developer workshops, operational workshops. And as always, better documentation um, on the OCP on the um, on the OpenShift side. We are also seeing a lot of um, asks for help for migrating from three to four. So that didn't surprise me at all. And um, you know, there was you know some basic um, stuff. Um, the lack of a dual stack support um, was was a couple of issues. Um, 
Yeah, but it, it's really still pretty, pretty early days. Um, and if uh, you guys saw my um, tweet with the survey in it, um, if you could retweet that on your Twitter thing so we can get more people in in the door. But um, it is, you know, I'm I'm not surprised. Other than the fact that the colors don't coordinate with the words here, um, with the graphics, but uh, I can fix that too. So I'll send a copy of, of the results here, um, sans anonymize. Um, but it's it's a pretty interesting um, feedback, I think, and it's a good baseline. I, and you know, as as we don't do any gatekeeping on OKD, who downloads it, who deploys it, um, it's very interesting to try and figure out who is actually using it out there in the universe. So the surveys will just keep repeating. And if there's other questions that I should be asking, please let me know. Um, I base this on one that we sent out to some OpenShift folks. So I could compare OpenShift folks to OKD folks. So that that's my bit for the day. But there's nothing here, nothing here sh hugely shocking from my, my point of view. Um, and you know, I'll let you all, all gander at that um, and share that with the group. The thing that I um, I know I heard from Joseph um, post that was some conversations about um, the operators that were available only for OCP operate operators. And I'm wondering yes. if we wanna if Joseph, you wanna express what you need um, here, and maybe we can figure out um, if that is this working group or another set of resources that we need to attach to that project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we are, um, a colleague of mine was using uh, a few operators like the serverless um, operator um, uh, without knowing that uh, it is only available with a subscription because it's very easy to get a, a image pull secret. Yeah, and we didn't understand that it's uh, only for trials. And uh, yeah, now uh, after the GA of OKD, um, we tried to set up everything uh, clean, in a clean um, environment and we were surprised that uh, some of the operators, the serverless and uh, uh, the Istio as a service mesh operator, um, yeah, weren't um, partially available for OKD and uh, this uh, was surprising for us because it's uh, not so clear if you install OKD that uh, you'll see um, what the limits are, what what you're allowed to uh, to use. Um, I was talking with Vadim about um, the service mesh operator. There is a substitute called um, Maestra, um, but I th I don't know how how often is it, it is updated. Um, I, I it's a little bit uh, behind in its version, um, um, behind of the service mesh operator from Red Hat. Um, the serverless operator is not available in a community version, and I think it would add lots of value to OKD if they were available, yeah, because they are based on open source projects. So uh, there is a little understanding from our side why they are, yeah, not also maintained the same. Um, fashion as OKD with images that are the same uh, as the OpenShift ones, which is great. Yeah, so the images from OKD and OpenShift are, I think, almost all the same, and it would be great to have the similar situation with the, uh, yeah, the most important operators. So one thing that kind of threw me for a loop, I you know, I looked at what the operator hub presented to me. Uh, it was, there's a, it's kind of empty. Um, there's not a lot available to you. And that's actually more depressing and disheartening than you than I, than I imagined it would be. Um, because like during the betas and the nightlies, and I've played with a few of them here and there, like it looks incredibly full and incredibly functional and like you could do so much. And now you can basically do nothing. There's not a lot available to you. and it doesn't look great. That that's that's I don't know what what what's behind all that and why or whatever. But like it it's it's kind of sad because like there's even operators referenced in the man, in the documentation that you do not have access to. They do not show up, and, and that's not that's really not great. 
we won't we won't ever be able to make you happy, Neil. I think. Um, no, but uh, kidding aside. Wow, uh, that's I'm, definitely. I'm so hurt. <laughs> I'm so hurt, Christian. Um, uh, no, that's definitely a thing uh, we we will look at now that GA is out. So uh, one thing that isn't super visible to the outside is that internally at Red Hat, that's different um, groups, different teams working on. So we have the core OpenShift, which is OKD, um, which doesn't include any of the operators that are on Operator Hub um, available either for free as community variants or by subscription. So um, now that we have the base working, we can actually approach the teams that would be, um, you know, working on, on getting that to work on OKD to actually make that. Um, so we will do that and um, yes, uh, we will follow up on that, definitely. So I think the um, the kubevert operator just merged the PR last week to make it uh, work on, on OKD. So uh, I'm not sure whether they'll be promoting that to Operator Hub right away or whether it may already be there. Uh, but yeah, that should technic technically work now. And we'll follow up uh, to make the kubevert operator and the serverless Maestra operator, uh, well, serverless and Istio operators um, also available there. Yeah, definitely. I agree that is uh, a very good use case and we should deliver on that. Yeah. So is it possible that they also get uh, built uh, together with uh, with uh, releases of OKD? So they are... Uh, no, no, yeah? it's not. We have completely different life cycles there, which is actually a feature uh, because they're services and not part of the core. So the life cycles are completely, um, uh, yeah, independent of each other. Mm -hmm. So, like, just, one just, thing that I was a little surprised was, um, and I see it right now when I look on Operator Hub IO, the website, and it's there. But like when I when I looked in inside of OKD, like the Rook operator for doing Ceph as the backend for your open OKD was not available, and that actually kind of threw me for a loop because I kind of expected that to be there because a lot of the documentation leans very heavily on saying, hey, you, you, you really should be using Ceph for the storage, uh, and, and I could do no Ceph, and that was a little weird. So that was, that was the biggest glitch that I saw. Yeah. The difference here is that Operator Hub lists Kubernetes operators. It's yeah. considered to be upstream for uh, people who do uh, Istio and Maestro operator, and they test on pure Kubernetes, and they expose it as a Kubernetes operator. The problem is that um, some of these operators are known not to work on OKD because of SCCs, because of other issues, and so on. This is why they are hidden from the community side. OK. And this discrepancy is also different from OCP, where we package and we can prepare a custom version. So. In the end, we had a chat with people from Operator Hub, and they said that it's mostly uh, a problem of time of the team. They are unable to manage three different, essentially different, um, streams of their operator. And we are working with them how to introduce community who would okay. support Kubernetes versions, who would support OKD, and so on. Um, it's a very tricky problem. And we're just trying our first steps with Kubeweird, um and image streams on Fedora. Um, hopefully, the results would be very positive so that other teams would adopt it. But we are crossing into the territory of Operator Hub teams. We cannot tell them how to live their lives. <laughs> um, uh, but you know what? I also work on that project, too. So Yeah. So um, Diane can. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure which which person you were talking to, and, and I'm glad you were you've already talked. To them. Yeah, and I really want to make that distinction. OperatorHub.io is is Kubernetes generic, um, and so and a lot of them haven't been tested. And so and there there are thousands more out there. I just haven't done a lot of outreach to populate it yet um, because okay. some of the there isn't a lot of automation behind operatorhub.io to be quite honest um, there are humans um, and and testing them and you know there there is no certification process there at all and really what operatorhub.io is is basically just a catalog 
um, that um, you know you could stand up um, anyone could stand up their own catalog and put a UI around it um, so it's a pretty simple um, website so the, yeah, and, and the front end is open source as well for operator how IO the whole the whole thing is yeah okay so yeah so if so, you want to so you know there there's a so the operator wish list for okd um yes that's a really good thing maybe rather than so that would be uh helpful for us to prioritize um yeah. because we want to get there eventually so we'll just have to keep bugging the teams and maybe put some of our own work hours into this uh, but there's many operators so um if you could please add all the operators you want to see which are you know the most urgent for you um into that list we that that would be helpful yeah, so I'll add it to the community page as well. So uh, here, let me see if I can copy that. Yes. Right there. I think Neil is typing as we speak. Yeah. No, Neil is not. Oh, Neil no, is not. Somebody else. somebody else that's filling it. <laughs> yeah, somebody else is doing it. Neil isn't doing anything because Neil doesn't actually know what these are all called. So. Hey, and Neil, you can get the Rook operator um, deployed using the YAML file. Okay, but yeah. Open shifts, and I dropped a link um, to a copy of it that I made that I that. Okay, that that'll help. help. Yeah, because I'm I'm now starting to look at what it's gonna take to do the thing to like replace our o, uh, open shift origin uh, three cluster with OKD four, and so it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. Um, so. Uh, the preliminary, preliminary exploration has begun for doing it for reals. So uh, that'll be helpful. Because this time we want to do it kind of right rather than what we did now. And I don't, I'm not proud of what we have right now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think, and, and Joseph, you, you, when you and I were talking about this, it was mostly the service mesh stuff that you were interested in first. And serverless, yes. Serverless. But serverless, I understand. At least the service mesh is uh, available in a in a community version. It's not not uh, not up to date, I think. But at least, yeah, uh, there were efforts to to publish it uh, to the community catalog, which which is great. Okay. Um, but yeah, but I don't know how often it, will it be updated or how good is it tested. And the same is for every operator in the operator hub for sure. But this would be this was would make uh, OKD similar uh, as feature rich as uh, OCP I think, uh, which would be great because we were waiting so long for OKD to have a service mesh and now it is not uh, yeah you know it's not uh, obviously uh, obviously uh, free was supported mm -hmm. so you know defeat from the jaws of victory and all that <laughs> yeah. So is the is the developer content that sits behind the samples operator in kind of the same boat? Uh, the no, it's it's worse off. The samples operator is nobody nobody has any samples to provide to begin with. the The samples operator for OCP is populated with a mixture of UBI and non UBI content, and separating all of that stuff. Like I've I've looked at it personally. Like look. Separating all that stuff is complicated. It's probably a lot easier to go back and start and build up content based on um, um, Fedora-based image, Fedora base image and CentOS-based image and start putting together a mixture ourselves because uh, the, the stuff that they use for OCP is like not reusable at all. Like that, that's really, the samples operator framework is great. The samples that it provides are not usable for non-OCP users, so so that that's the problem with it. But anything UBI based is distributable, right? D uh, careful, careful, careful. Anything UBI based, as long as it doesn't layer on top in unintentionally, uh, and that's what makes it like a little bit of a trap because. Uh, if you build something using UBI images on top of a RHEL host, your RHEL certificate, your RHEL subscription populates in and activates the extra content automatically. And so it is, unless you explicitly do work to make sure you don't include it, 
uh, you you leak in rel content and and with the way that UBI is currently made, uh, I am not confident that none of those samples don't have any non UBI content. So so that's why uh, it's it's much easier for us to be let's let's just make it ourselves in, a, in with the system that literally cannot pull from rel. We have filtered all the images which are containing non-UBI rail packages. That's basically OpenStax ironic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is yet another thing we have to get built for KD. Which involves RDO stuff, and that's just another... Ugh. Who is the point person that you're talking to, um, Christian, for the RDO stuff? If anybody, nobody. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was Steve Hardy. Yeah. Uh, basically, folks working on Metal Cube. Okay. We should contact them directly. Yeah, I think that's probably um, our next next step is maybe to sort of let's let's get that wish list together. If the Nvidia, if it's just the drivers, um, and then we can try and figure out who the who to coordinate with. Um, and put names next to those of, of Red Hatters or NVIDIA people or whomever it is that's NVIDIA, rather, um, people, and, and and move that forward, because I, I think that's a significant piece of piece of work on a lot of people's parts. Um, and then it's ongoing maintaining those things as well, so you've got to get buy-in for them to not just do it once, but to do it continuously. It is also unlikely that we will be able to make the NVIDIA GPU operator work. Like, uh, just from a practical perspective, it is unlikely that, that we can ever make that work because my understanding is that it relies on the stabilized RHEL kernel ABI to function properly on RHEL. And I, I do not know of a good way to make this work on Fedora. So I, wow. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to offer any hopes about that working right now. Why? We can build drivers using the KMS. We're using stable F32. We're not using some weird um, F32. Because, because the problem is uh, I don't know how you're going to make sure you match with the running kernel as things move forward. Um, we, would and also, build them, we would build them on host. We would build them in containers. And if UEFI is activated, they won't, they won't load. That's not OKD's problem. No, but it's your problem with the GPU operator. Like they they don't load, so it's not going to work. It's it works in RHEL because there's an ugly, very hacky, terrible thing that they've done to make it so that it works with even UEFI mode. But it will not work in Fedora right now. I I don't currently have answers for how to improve that. Though it is something we're tangentially looking at in the Fedora Workstation working group because it's causing other problems like, hey, people who put Fedora Workstation on laptops with NVIDIA GPUs, uh, they enable the driver and it doesn't do anything. So, so the, it, there, there's problems to solve there. I'm just, I'm just not giving, I'm, I'm just giving this um, warning that it is unlikely that we will have the NVIDIA GPU working in all cases, uh, like in Azure, for example. It's just not going to work because of, because of that. So beyond the list that we have here now, uh, are there other ones? I mean, I, someone was just asking for what, what did we filter out? Um, and maybe Vetti, not right this instant, but if you can grab a list of what got filtered out, that might also be a, a thing a thing to add in here, not as a wish list, but just for reference. Um, what's I don't see. Um, I don't see a reason why those should be filtered out. Some of, all of them are optional. Some of them might not work in your setup, but that's a different story. But for us, this list is helpful because we can start contacting teams yeah. and ask them to implement, you know, to revive their OKD support, basically. Yeah. If we get some of them, that's great. We don't commit to getting them, all of them, by, I don't know, next week and so on. That's just not going to work. That's outside of our reach. So. Um... And I was just going to ask a question. Um, the the service mesh one, if I brought in, um, say, Kong 
um, from Kuma, I think oh, Kuma from Kong, let me get my names right, or um, Tetrate. Um, that's not the same one as the one that we deliver with um, Operator Hub inside of OCP, but does that help at all? Um, to get I, I think the more the better. Yeah. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking there's, there's at least that I know of two other Envoy base service mesh providers <clears throat> beyond Istio, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that, that, we, that I could ask to see if they um, will put theirs in, um, first of all, in operatorhub.io, and I haven't, um, and I should, and uh, then to see if they'll get it and test it on OKD. Um, so that's that's a, another possibility is, um, and we all have been probably watching the Istio Knative Google conversation, so it might not be a bad backup plan um, to have those available as well. So I think this. Go ahead. Jim. I think this uh, GPU uh, thing is a very important uh, because it's uh, for machine learning. It's uh, yeah, best practice to use GPUs. Yeah. It should so what, uh, really be supported. Yeah. So one of the things, um, just yesterday I did a um, an Ask Me Anything session with the Open Data Hub folks, um, and I'm trying to get them to, um, and I'm pretty sure they already have tried and done it successfully. We just haven't demoed it. O running Open Data Hub on um, OKD, so that there's a, a pure open stack, uh, open source stack for Open Data Hub, um, it, which is just a reference architect. Sure, it's not for ML and AI. It's not um, a product yet from Red Hat. I say yet because I'm hopeful, but I'm always hopeful. Um, so there. So uh, just just to that, uh, as far as I know, that's with the office of the CTO, and I was approached by someone uh, from Octo two weeks ago and we chatted all throughout last week and they're setting up OKD right now for I think several demos and several architectures. Um, so yeah, that's probably gonna, gonna come soon. Yeah, so maybe um, offline Christian, we could figure out what those demos are and just get them staged and, and broadcast them out to the universe. I'd like to, to be on, in on, on whatever those reference architectures, the more we can get. Um, that more content that that's great, but I'm thinking the open data hub one will drive the GPU piece. Um, if they if they build open data they because they rely so heavily on GPU, so that might be a way to a way to nudge the Nvidia people to um, to do if we need to do anything um, or at least get some documentation there. Um, Code ready workspaces. What's the status on that, Christian and Vadim? Is there any movement? At all? No. Okay. Um, no, I don't think I ever aware. contacted them. I don't think I ever contacted that team, but um, it doesn't require any fancy stuff on the host, so I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. That's another one that you can deploy now with the with the YAML files if you go straight to the project, um, even though it. it May not show up in the operator hub. You you can you can get or you can go upstream and get uh, Eclipse J7 uh, and, and deploy it via the operator. So it's just a matter of packaging. Yeah. Good. That, I think, I think so. Device. Yeah, because like, like just like with um, with Ceph, um, that's how I've been deploying it is just via the YAML file straight from the project. Have you, uh, and I apologize if you've already done this, have you blogged about that or demoed that or anything at all, Charles? Um, it, it's, in the, it's in the documentation for my lab. I did drop the links in there. Um, I, actually, I'll go ahead and bring this up. I, I started preparing a, a pull request um, to see if you guys like this idea for our OKD site to add a section for um, recipes just little short snippets of how do I install Eclipse Che in my OKD cluster, or one, one of them I've written up is is deploying Ceph, uh, or um, you know adding persistent storage to the image registry, that kind of thing. 
something you know shorter than the actual documentation but easy to find yeah so um i would love to do an okd cookbook just saying i did i did a whole bunch of them when i was at active state for python and other languages with people i think that's a really effective way to get um get recipes out there and get people get examples so that's we could do a okd slash cookbook and then have a whole bunch of recipes out there and I think that's a known thing in uh, in the tech world to do cookbooks like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, put the put an issue in actually on okd.io on that site as and and on um, this, and then we can just maybe just do. I can set up the infrastructure for that, and people can just do pull requests to add them. Um, as Joseph knows, I just basically merge stuff anyone gives me uh, and pray. Merge and pray is what I do. Um, so uh, I'm happy, Charo, to, to do that. And then I, I actually think that would be a good ebook to um, share, like a little, to, if everybody brought their recipes together. That would be a really great um, way to, um, to do that. So um, A plus for that. But I'm pretty sure there was someone on the Code Ready team um, that was looking at building um, an OKD. Um, code ready thing, and I'll I'll dig up the name from an email. I have it somewhere, Christian and Vadim, and we can figure that out. Um, some someone was working on it. I just think it didn't get published anywhere. Um, and that was that was it. So um, yeah, so that's. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, what else should we cover off here and um, today? Yeah, I have <laughs> I have a, a small uh, thing to talk about. Um, we are preparing um, OKD for some of our production clusters, and uh, we found out that we had uh, problems in integrating the monitoring in our environment because we have a central monitoring, uh, which um, monitor several OpenShift clusters. And I was talking with uh, Vadim also in, uh, in Slack channel, but I would like to talk here also about that. Uh, we had to s turn off the monitoring operator for that. So we had to uh, bring our own monitoring stack on OKD um, because the operating monitor, monitoring operator is overwriting our, our uh, Prometheus rules and uh, dashboards, and uh, yeah, I, I'm just asking if it's possible to to turn off modules, some modules um, you don't want to have for some reason uh, during the installation and without any hacks, because in other distributions, uh, colleagues of me always show me, hey, here is a button, zack, uh, switch off, and you don't have to mess around with anything you you don't like. And uh, I think it would be a great advantage if you are possible to do so on your own risk, sure, because uh, yeah, you are responsible for everything. Um, but it's it's possible to also feed the UI with metrics. We have uh, achieved that today. My colleagues that did that, and it works. But we had to yeah uh, do a, a little bit of uh, hacks, and I think it's worse to think about to turn off a few things you don't need or, or want to replace with something different because you are forced to. This is a very tough topic. And when, when um, Josef says um, adjust Simio, it means rip it out entirely. That's the biggest problem here because um, OKD has to have all the features OCP has. One of the features of OCP is constant monitoring, and it's embedded very heavily in every single part of the product. You would, other, other operators might um, render degraded if they say, my metrics, um, I, I cannot inject my metrics in Simio because it's down entirely. So the most gentle solution right now would be minimizing CMO. Um, that aligns with the goal of code ready containers team as well, because they don't need two Prometheuses, which are very memory hungry. The biggest issue with Simio is not that it's 
invasive. The problem is that it runs two Prometheus instances. Each of them uses at least one gig of memory. Um, and you cannot disable it because other operators require metrics as well. So we will start gently pushing ideas to minimize Simeo uh, to the team and at your own risk, similar to what etcd has, you can have a non-HA um, uh, Prometheus instance. The problem is that your cluster won't be able to upgrade um, because you're losing non-HA and we cannot guarantee that it's going to work. Um, that can be worked around, I guess. We'll see the way it's implemented, but um, there are options. Another, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I didn't realize you were still. Oh. So more brutal options available right now is um, ripping out Simio out of manifests in the release image. You can replace it with dummy rel. Um, I don't know rel UBI images. They would just be there, have no manifest, the VO would say, I did my best, I applied everything we had, and would move on. Um, again, you would have to maintain your own fork for that, which is not really complex, but that's not OKD anymore. Um, another brutal thing is you can ignore this in CVO and scale down the monitoring operator to zero, you won't be able to upgrade because you have overrides in CVO. So nice options are pretty much very limited right now, um, mostly because CVO is very, almost every core operator is actually core and very critical. We cannot disable them. They were carefully picked up. But we definitely will work on minimizing its impact. It, should be a cluster profile, basically, where you have a non-HA Prometheus, which doesn't take uh, a tons of images. The problem is not uh, the memory consumption, but um, that you can't deploy a second uh, Prometheus operator because um, uh, there is no, you can uh, say on which namespaces the second Prometheus operator should listen, but you cannot say, please don't listen it's not exclusive, yeah, and right. that's why it's it's hard to set up your own stack. But that's basically a Simio bug, because it should not listen to your uh, rules in user namespaces. It should only be limited to OpenShift namespaces. And if your solution is trying to list OpenShift namespaces, it hmm. Yeah, that's a tricky, tricky topic, uh, and the use case is very odd. So we might have to have a chat with the monitoring team on that. But yeah, I, I think the bro broader issue. Oh, let him go ahead. I, I consider this to be a simio bug because it should be able to be limited to some part. There should be a setting, and if you if your use case would be pretty useful for others, I'm pretty sure they would be able to use that fork, um, use that setting. Uh, in the worst case, you can maintain your own fork with rebases, but that's not really a fun time. Yeah, the broader the broader issue here is really that um, that's the thing we don't support in any, not in OCP, and therefore also not in OKD, right? Um, so what I would suggest, because it's definitely out of out of what we can do right now and in the very short term, um, what I would suggest is to, to, in order to raise this awareness with the team that actually does that, I just open an issue on the, on the GitHub repository for the monitoring operator, um, asking whether it would be possible to uh, deactivate um, that specific part, um, you know, just as for, for them to have to have a card that says this is an actual use case, um, 
because right now uh, we, we don't offer that option um, where to deactivate. Okay. As Vadim said, because it's very integrated into everything. Thank you. Yeah. I interrupted Charo, uh, I think. No, I, actually, the, you guys ended up where, where I was going. I, I was asking more about your specific use case, um, and, and that's that's really the place. To, I know in, in 3.11 right now, both on uh, the origin side in the lab and in the production side in the data center, um, we are running two uh, Prometheus instances. Now, this is pre-operator, right? Um, we've got Prometheus that came with the cluster and is monitoring all of the cluster infrastructure, uh, and we followed the rules on it and didn't muck around with that one. But we did deploy our own um, set of Prometheus uh, infrastructure in the cluster that is monitoring all of the apps. So, so it's it we've got it watching the namespaces that we deploy our apps in, and it it's working fine side by side with the with with what came deployed with the cluster. So the apps we have user workload feature, which basically control which spins up a new Prometheus controlled by Simio. Uh, the problem is that sending metrics back to a different monitoring system. I guess what you ca could work is um, an approach used by telemetry. It sends a part of metrics back to a different Prometheus server, leaving CMO fully intact. Um, this is how we get those fancy graphs. Basically, your clusters are sending a part of critical control plane data back to our servers using remote writes. So instead of fully removing Simio and replacing it with your solution, you could send the very same metrics to a different Prometheus and um, maintain a monitoring system based on that. Mm -hmm. So is there, uh, so this, the Vadim, you've put in this cluster monitoring thing, is that, um, that's definitely being something being worked on by the OpenShift engineering team? They didn't mention that they would start working on it, but they are aware that this use case exists and it should be considered. I'm pretty sure the answer would be we won't disable CMO ever but I'm hoping they would come up with some alternative solution. Um, and if people noticed in the chat, I put a link to a form, which I also put in the community page. Um, if you could sign up and tell me which one, which sessions you'd like to do and what time zone you're in um, for the August 17th event, um, I will try and work a schedule that fits to your time zones. Um, I'm pretty sure KubeCon is running on EU time, so it'll be early for me on the West Coast, but um, please just do fill it in and we'll try and do that. And if multiple people talk about the same um, platform, like five people want to do it on, you know, I don't AWS, we'll, we'll get you all together and you can chat about it and be in one, one hour and one person could be the driver. So we'll, we'll figure that out too. There you go. So we're almost to the top of the hour. We've got 10 minutes left. Is there any good news anyone wants to share with us? Anyone deploy a production workload on OKD4 yet? <laughs> I'm hoping I could do that next week. I'm replacing my home cluster. I, I, haven't, I haven't started yet. Trying to yeah, uh, does that count as a production workload? Um, as long as somebody else, except probably for you, depends on it, that's pretty much production to me. There you go. <laughs> there, there, there. Uh, yeah. 
So Jamie's, Jamie has said that he is. Uh, Jamie, where is that production workload? Is that another home system? University, University of Michigan. Michigan. On All right. Well, if you do a production workload there on vSphere, you will get the prize. Um, and, um, what is the prize? I, I got to make up. First, I'm figuring out the t-shirt situation. I hate <laughs> it. But uh, we'll, we'll figure it. Probably a, a kegger at UMish. Is what if, we are, if you are talking about a prize, we are shortly before uh, getting our uh, OKD4 cluster in production for internal usage for different teams. And uh, that's why I'm asking about this GPU thing, because I think it will come in the midterm. And But yeah, we are, we are planning to getting a GA in the next next very few weeks. Yeah, and as for, as for data, like we're we're working on figuring out when we're going to do our deployment. There's some underlying unfortunate architectural things that we need to fix first, but uh, we are starting to we are starting to scope and plan our OKD4 deployment to replace our OpenShift origin deployment. Um, so that that's that's a coming at some point, hopefully soon rather than later, because nobody more than me wants us to switch to OKD4 already. So the, I've got two clusters running in our lab, but but that's to that's preparing our team for an OCP upgrade because we're still running 311. Ooh. Well, I mean you're better off than me. That that's all I will say. <laughs> I'm still saying it sounds like Jamie's in the lead here. So um, um and and we may make him our showcase on August 17th. So uh, Mike, this is for day job. This is not for Fedora Neil. Fedora Neil doesn't have anywhere to deploy OKD. He is too broke and doesn't have computers. Oh. <laughs> Start a GoFundMe. Yeah, oh, you go. no, that's too frivolous to, to have a GoFundMe for. So, Charles, so I think that one of the takeaways is, is I'd like to have a conversation on the side with you about designing the cookbook recipe pages for OKD.io and um, give you proofs to do, to do so. Um, and, and start okay. figuring out that, because I think that's a really great thing. And then please um, fill out the form that's in there. Um, Communistif, what am I reading here? Fedora head, Communist. Oh, yeah, that's what we need. The anarchist version of OKD, the anarchist guide to OKD. That's next. Um, all right, well, I don't know, maybe, de Jamie, deliver the child first. Okay, I don't know. Make sure the child is GA. Yeah, and um, yeah, before before uh, anything else, otherwise there'll be some other problems in your life. Um, so let's let's see what we can do. And uh, yeah, so if you can, everybody f fill out the form. I will try and create a landing page for um, the August seventeenth thing um, that we can all use and um, schedule people on, and you can see what your time slots are, and we can promote it. Um, it's a bit of guerrilla uh, marketing during KubeCon, so we'll have to use our stealthy social channels and everything else to get the word out about it. Um, but, and there's probably 70 other um, things that are happening on day zero at KubeCon as well, but we can rise up above the noise, hopefully, and um, at least capture all that content um, in a, in a day-long thing and where you're, probably wear your t-shirts if we can get them printed and shipped in time. And, um, Maybe set up a store and sell T-shirts or something at KubeCon and pop T-shirts and popcorn. I have a question. Um, do I, I was thinking about that in the last days. I would very appreciate it if we could do um, some kind of hackathons um, for for different tasks which will improve OKD, um, such like yeah, is this a GPU thing um, to get that working? Yeah and uh, propose a, a POC or a blueprint how to do that. I would love to do so because uh, I think we have some knowledge in, in this working group um, to pick out uh, several things which are too hard to uh, solve them alone. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what you think about that. I think it's a great I idea. I think that's a great idea, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, that's definitely the way forward, I think, for us. And I think it might be something that we can cross pollinate with the operator framework um, group um, and you know, co host that. It, one, if we can get our list and the point people for each of those um, things that are on our wish list identified, um, that might be um, the good basis for uh, a CNCF now that um, operator framework is in CNCF and OKD co sponsored um, hackathon. Um, and I'd be happy to, to do that. So let's get that list prioritized, figure out who, who's who there. I'll go on to and um, reach out to the folks on the, the operator framework side and once the list is there and see if I can um, figure out, who, you know, how we could do that. So that's, that's not a bad thing at all. So I'll add that into the list of possibilities beyond GA. But still, um, adoption is really where it's at right now, and more feedback. And adoption, when we have the operators, will be easier, I think. They can do more things, more workloads easier. So that's a key piece of it. And, um, you know, again, creating content and updating, doing the recipes, and continuing what you guys have been doing wonderfully. Um, home labs, content on live streams, openshift.com, medium, all that stuff is really, it's huge. And um, we'll just keep doing the outreach and getting more bodies here um, and to talk on this call. So with that, um, who is LiveLace here? This profiling apps for CPU, RAM, and GPU. Uh, is that a request? Um, or is that something you'd want to hack on? And I, I don't recognize your name, so if you want to... And, uh, profiling is a very interesting topic. Um, if we focus on core operators, um, that would be extremely helpful to the OCP project. Uh, but live hacking on that, we would need to grow some expertise on that. Um, well, that can be done, though. Um, we just need more time to contact folks from the core team because I don't really know where to start. Um, I'm usually just bringing out weird log entries to the team and they fix it, but that's not really weird sustainable. Weird log entries. That's great description right there. Awesomely formulated log messages, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I'm, that's yeah, good good topic for another another session and let's keep adding to this wish list and see if we can't make it all happen. Uh, probably not in the next week, but maybe um, two weeks from now. And you will all hear from me if you fill out that form. Um, and um, I will send the form to the mailing list as well to sign up for the August 17th and then I'll start a thread um, with a schedule um, proposed. And people can yay or nay their slots in that thing. I'll figure out what time we actually have to start at. I think it's like 6 a.m. on the West Coast, so I love I love that. Um, we, we'll figure it all out. All right, guys. Okay. Thank you very much. Talk to you all soon. Thank you all. Bye.